On this sun porch in South St. Louis, Justin King is working on a sculpture that is truly out of the box. I use a lot from Amazon, but that's just personal uh, buying habits, I guess. Justin creates all sorts of art, but these days trash is his treasure and cardboard is his canvas. Sometimes you need really big pieces. The construction dumpsters are usually good. And you want to catch it early. You don't want to get uh, uh, the, the stuff on the bottom of the uh, dumpster. Justin has always enjoyed sculpting with traditional materials, but stone and bronze are expensive and clay is messy. So he recently decided to give cardboard a try and found it checked all the right boxes. Speed is, is great. Uh, accessibility is an advantage. I'd say some of the disadvantages is that, you know, there's a hierarchy for art and the materials that you use and what it's made out of. So trying to bring something that is, you know, trash is high art is, is something you gotta talk people into, I think. And since this is the show me state, Justin thought the best way to get people to appreciate cardboard art is to get it out amongst the people. So he created a giant cardboard duck named Carl. And in March, he placed it on South Grand. At that time of the year, it did not last long, of course. But Carl got Justin a lot of attention. And that convinced him focusing on cardboard sculpting would make his work more cutting edge. It's funny, you start to have a certain like for uh, certain cardboards over others, you know, how thick or how pliable it is. There's a million shades of cardboard, actually. I'm still learning all the time. Um, it's, a, it's a neat medium. It's affordable. Anybody can figure out how to use it. I just use a razor knife and a hot glue gun. It gets stronger as you glue up more pieces and they all kind of interlock, almost like a weave, like a, a woven basket, you know. A simple string of that basket isn't very strong, but when it's woven, it, it gets much firmer. Most of Justin's cardboard creations have been large animals, like the ones he made for a show this summer at the Sheldon Art Gallery. But now, Justin is adding people to his repertoire, thanks to his first commission from the Mile Wide Beer Company in Louisville. They hired Justin to create a cardboard bust of Michael McGreevy, a real bar owner from Boston whose old-timey image is used on Mile Wide's Pale Ale. Justin is making some parts of Mr. McGreevy out of boxes from the brewery. And you might say he has faced some challenges. Obviously a little bit more difficult to get the planes of the face and things like that. Animals, you could be a little bit more uh, gestural in how you designed it and people would get it. But uh, trying to make someone look like the subject is a little tougher. In keeping with the recycling theme of his work, Justin has been known to repurpose some of his pieces. This blue elephant wall hanging is the head from Eleanor the Elephant, who was part of the display at the Sheldon. The chimp from that show is now on display at Art Mart. And this fall, the giant bear from that show will be displayed at the South Grand Chalk Walk, where he will be covered in chalkboard paint so he can be decorated by the public. I like interactive art that people can touch. You know, we're so afraid to you know, we, you know, there's ropes in the museums, and so to invite people to come in and, and just add to it is, is kind of a neat thing. Fleeting is a word Justin often uses when referring to his cardboard sculptures. But while their life expectancy is shorter than something carved from stone, he creates them as if they were meant to last forever. You put attention to detail in every aspect of your work so that uh, you know, it's, it's your work, it's your name, no matter whether you're working with stone or precious metals or wh whatever it is, you want it to be nice. And even something as lowly as cardboard, you want, you want it to be your best work. <laughs>